body. Traces of equagesic the painkiller Lee had taken that night were found, along with cannabis. The public revelation that Lee took drugs gave the press even more fuel to add to the raging controversy. Bruce Lee had two life insurance policies that hung in the balance. If it could be proved that Lee died of his drug use, the insurance companies could forfeit the policies, since Lee stated that he did not use drugs. The final verdict was that Lee's death was caused by misadventure, which means a series of unrelated events that can lead to a mishap. Needless to say, many observers, including Lee's doctors, were leery not only of the verdict, but of the whole inquiry itself. Prior to the actual inquiry, a private session was held in order to assemble information, which some of the prospective witnesses found highly irregular. The jury's decision was that Bruce Lee had died by hypersensitivity towards an ingredient found in the equagesic tablet he took. To call a pretrial hearing from which uh, any spectators are uh, excluded suggests that you may be trying to taint the evidence a bit. Now, I'm not saying that that's what happened, but I, I just felt a bit uncomfortable in the situation. The person who was sort of the honoree at that meeting was uh, Dr. Teer, who I understand was quite a well-known forensic pathologist who had been brought from England specifically for purposes of his expert witness. Dr. Teer led the, the discussion saying that, to his knowledge, there were no authenticated cases of death and I'm saying authenticated cases of death in the medical literature having occurred because of the use of cannabis, marijuana, hashish, any of those group of chemical derivatives which have the same parrot uh, plant. And he felt that because Hong Kong is a sort of a microcosm and because it does not figure in a big way in medical legal decisions, and since most of the people in Hong Kong have their credentialing from other countries, that we needed to be pretty careful as a medical community about making some statement that Bruce Lee, this very famous person, has died unequivocally as a result of the use of cannabis or one of its derivatives, particularly since there was good evidence that from the chemical analysis of the contents of Bruce's body that not only was a cannabis byproduct uh, on board, but equagesic also. I was informed by the coroner that uh, they did found an autopsy, uh, the same, same stuff in his stomach. But of course the coroner's inquest was, uh, the, the verdict was that he died from uh, uh, hypersensitivity towards uh, a drug which he's been taking, the equigesic, which is uh, uh, analgesic, as a painkiller. Equagesic is taken by the, the million dose in, in the Orient. Uh, it is not one of those drugs which uh, I had ever had drawn to my attention as causing medical complications before. It seems to me almost ludicrous to assume that when the same product was found on his person, uh, Immediately, oh well, I shouldn't say immediately, as I understand it, the autopsy was done on Monday after he died on Friday night and the samples were taken. If they could still find evidence of cannabis products that had not been degraded by that time, we have to assume he had a significant amount on board. To reach out here and, and, and pick equagesic out of the blue seems to me an almost deliberate effort to avoid the obvious. And if the reason to avoid it was because there were no previous cases reported, that's a kind of an asinine reasoning in my way of thinking because uh, this means that people who were taking equagesic uh, without problems might now be afraid to. It means that those who are Bruce Lee disciples would avoid facing the obvious. Uh, it might call into question the validity of payment of life insurance and that I certainly didn't want and I want the family to be deprived of anything that would be rightfully theirs in terms of the premiums that had been paid. Uh, uh, in the meantime, we do know that Bruce had admitted taking the cannabis, so his own statement validated our initial impression. Uh, and we know that he had gone to the West Coast and reportedly, the West Coast of the United States, and support, reportedly being, been told by a neurosurgeon there that not only was the drug harmless, but even that he himself 
experimented with uh, drugs, uh, uh, hallucinogens at times, because he found it very relaxing. So uh, it seems to me that you've got to throw your elbow out of joint to reach in some pocket for an equagesic conclusion when this other evidence is, is so obvious. And uh, that may be a superficial judgment on my part, but I, I really had trouble coming up with an equagesic verdict. I mean, you almost have to use a, a Ouija board to come to that conclusion. In the months immediately following the inquest, Hong Kong papers devoted a riotous level of attention to the rumors surrounding Lee's death. Superstar Bruce Lee dies. The barricades were up to keep back the crowds outside the Kowloon funeral. Showman's farewell. Fans wept. Stars bowed their heads and the widows wore white today. As Cannabis was in Lee's stomach. A government chemist today told the Bruce Lee inquest. Bruce Lee was a sick man. Top Chinese actor Bruce Lee had been seriously ill for two months before his death. It was learned yesterday. Lee inquest. Betty to be recalled. Screen actress Betty Ting Pei. One million hangs on Lee verdict. If the resumed inquest into Bruce Lee finds that he died from the effects of taking dangerous drugs. Bruce Lee, victim of the ninjas? A Japanese assassin, a poisonous herb in the night, self-inflicting snorting of cocaine. But even more incredible than these is one method of killing which involves what's known as a delayed death strike. Another rumor is that Bruce Lee met his death in a blood feud with triad gangsters. Some people still believe that Bruce Lee is still alive and lives as a recluse in a remote corner of China. With the success of Enter the Dragon and the international bankability of Lee's name, Bruce Lee in death inspired a legion of pseudo-similar androids, guys who operated under nom de plumes such as... The best and most popular of the imitators was Bruce Lai, who also recreated Lee's life in this film. I always tell the producers, Bruce Lee is my idol. I like him, I admire him, but don't make me show his lousy movie. You may call me Ho Song Dao or James Ho, but I don't like uh, people call me Bruce Lai or Lai Xiaolong because they change this name just like uh, cheating, a kind of cheating, cheating people. Oh, this is Bruce Lai. He's not dead yet, uh, but I don't like it because I want to be myself. Unleashed to wreak vengeance on the evil ones who brought about his untimely death. Five years ago, Bruce Lee, king of Kung Fu and undisputed master of the martial arts, was buried, but not before making a deal with the Black Angel of Death. Now, his tormented soul returns as Bruce Lee fights back from the grave. Damn you! 
Apart from his human imitators, Lee was also depicted as an animated hero. What is surprising is that his cartoon antics were not that far removed from what he did in his live-action films. Oh. 